Overnight with Daryl Morris on Talk Radio. Hello, good morning. Quarter past one, Talk Radio. My name is Daryl Morris. Us three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. Say you get in touch, talk, and then your message, eight, seven, two, double, two. Let's bring in uh, Kwame Knight now, who is a broadcaster and a presenter, has his own events business to take us through what's on his mind as we step out of the weekend. Kwame, hi there. Hey. Hello, how are Welcome. you? I'm very well, sir. Welcome along. This is the first time I think that we've um, uh, that we've spoken, isn't it? So this is, uh, yeah. this is, a, this is a, a joy for both of us, I, I could say, perhaps. It is indeed. Okay, especially well, we'll... on Magic Monday as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> indeed. Listen, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, uh, I think yeah. it's probably uh, right and fair that we start with the violence. Uh, in America, Kwame, and and obviously we we watch on from some distance, really, on 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 this story. Um, it's hard to digest, really, isn't it? It's yeah, it, it's really unbelievable um, to to witness and to have seen what's what's happened. I mean, it it was filmed, um, and I think that's what's caused the absolute horror to be able to watch, you know, on social media a video for for nine minutes of of somebody essentially dying. Yeah, and then of course this story has um, has escalated somewhat, Kwame, in the last uh, in the last couple of days. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, you, we, we watched the, the rolling news footage of of these protests happening in uh, 75 cities around uh, the United States of America, several over here as well. And and I just I I am utterly unsurprised. This, this was my take, uh, Kwame, just now. Is that yeah. I, I don't I don't feel in the least bit surprised that this is where we are where where we're at. Well, yeah, I, I, I definitely have to uh, agree with you. This has been something that, you know, it happened, what, six, seven days ago now, and nothing was done uh, to the officers. And this has been tension that has been bubbling, and I think we've now seen it overspill onto the streets uh, of America, and like you said, in, in 75 cities now. Yeah, and, and my my sense—I uh, don't know about yours, but my sense is that, that this is this has never really gone away. Um, it's never really not been a problem, and the the the, fl- the, the flames of it continue to be fanned uh, in in various parts. I just—I I wonder if you would agree with that. I definitely would. I mean, I remember, you know, going back twenty-eight years now. We're talking about when um, Rodney King, um, his. Um, brutal beating was uh, captured uh, and that sparked the LA riots. So this is something that has definitely been uh, bubbling underneath the surface for quite some time um, and it seems to go uh, and then come back again and and now we've seen it with uh, the George Lord uh, case. There's a brilliant quote from uh, from Will Smith uh, that I mentioned earlier on where he said that um the racism isn't getting worse; it's getting filmed. I mean, that's that's so true. Um, I think, obviously, with the advent of social media, it's definitely more prevalent than it has been than before. Um, but yes, it's definitely being broadcasted to people that probably never would have known it was happening, never um, have, have, have noted it was happening, and and now it is definitely much more prevalent. Um, to the general public, yeah. and I, I, I just I've, I've I've sort of described how how, how I um, from 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 the position that I come from, Kwame, kind of struggle to to, to properly uh, understand that feeling, that feeling that the colour of your skin uh, can be in some parts a death sentence. That isn't something that I've ever had to face, um, and 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 something that I I have to acknowledge, I do not possess. I can be angry, I suppose, but I don't possess it. And I think this is one of the things, isn't it, that people need to to, to step into the lives and, and perhaps the skin of others for a while. Yeah, definitely, to, to actually understand, to understand it. I mean, you make a, a very uh, valid point. And so when you see um, black people, you know, you know in, in America, and also, you know, we have seen um, uh, with, with the demonstrations that's been happening, here in the UK as well, it's it's something that all black people will have experienced and, and possibly have felt at some point in their lives. And this is something um, that we're seeing uh, unfold now in front of us. Um, 
And unless you're in that position uh, of being, you know, judged solely on, on the color of your skin, not for the content of your or the integrity of your character, just just by, you know, your skin color, you're being judged by that. That that's really hard to 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 understand, I, I guess, from like 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 you said, from somebody who has never never experienced it. Hmm. This is a bit of a big question, but where do we go from here? <sighs> I mean, it, I think that we we need to really um, be open about this uh, this situation, um, you know, and really talk about it. Have open. Um, dialect. I mean, when, when we have, you know, tweets such as when the looting starts, the shooting starts, that really is an opening dialogue for um, decent conversation mm -hmm. to really look at how can we actually work together and solve this issue and problem that has been long standing for decades now. Which was the president, by the way. I, I mean, I yeah. wonder if we shouldn't let it, let it pass us by that that, that those are the words of the president of the United States during this period of civil unrest. I mean, is that something that he, he should be coming out and saying at a time like this, when, when we need calm and, and we need um, balanced um, perspectives? I don't think it was the right thing to say at, at this point, not at all. The, the, the issue, the, the, the truth here is that it's not going to go away, is it, uh, Kwame? That, that we're not going to not need these conversations that the, the black lives matter movement is never going to be out of business is it never i mean unless we like i said unless we can have open dialogue and talk openly about it situations and cases like this are going to continuously happen you know there you know we really have to remember Breonna taylor ormond albury trayvon martin you know the list goes on and on and on and if we don't talk about it openly and if we sort of have a riot, have civil unrest, and then it dies down and we pretend everything's okay, it's just going to flare up again. And so we definitely have to have open conversations and dialogues to see how can we work together to sort this out. Mm. What, what, what does that mean, open dialogue? How do we get there? And, and how difficult a job is that? I mean, I think it's, Understanding from all perspective, from the black perspective, you know, as as a, as a black male or black female, like listening to um, conversations from from the, our perspective on what it feels like to be treated um, based on the colour of your skin, and really understanding that. Now, it's it's very easy to say, oh, you know, I, I get it, you know, you, you have it hard. But that's just a throwaway statement. You know, it really can affect everything you do. Like if you're just walking down the street and, you know, you're just racially profiled just because of the way you look or because, like I said, the color of your skin. These conversations are not had. And I don't think they ever have really been had or they are had when we have what we have going on at the moment. But have we actually ever dealt with them? No. And so we really do need to go back to the drawing board and actually have open discussions and talk about it in depth and work out how we can fix this together. Yeah. And, and they, they, they do seem to happen in a very fraught context, don't they? Um, on, on perhaps too many occasions. I wonder if there, there was a really interesting point made. Producer John alerted me to a very interesting point that, that, that isn't, isn't my own, so I won't, uh, I won't take it, but Will, who does uh, the, the weekend overnight program on our sister session, TalkSport, made this point that, because they obviously, uh, th this, this issue bled into the sports scene in the last couple of years uh, with athletes. I think it's American football, possibly baseball, well, poss possibly quite a few, actually. Uh, but black athletes taking the knee uh, rather than standing during the, the national anthem. And that method of protest, that method of having your voice heard and your message heard, was itself condemned by the President of the United States. It was condemned as uh, not being patriotic, as being anti-American, uh, as opposed to being pro-black, right? And and you sort of... You, you, I probably, I probably Will made this point over the weekend... Well, what do you expect? How do you expect it to go anywhere other than violence if the peaceful protest that you uh, that you try first is condemned? 
I think that's a, a very good point. And I mean, I was also um, watching on, on on the TV today, and you know, you had really angry um, protesters, and there was a really powerful um, video of um, a young black man talking to an older black individual and he was that you know the older one was really angry and he was saying you know I've, I've done the peaceful protesting i've done the march and i've done the singing and yet i'm not heard and the younger black man was saying but you know this isn't the way to go about it you know the violence isn't going to solve anything and you know the, the older uh, black guy was just saying look but i've done everything the way i'm supposed to but still there is no change when will it change you know, and just to see that dialogue happening was, was, was just so powerful. You could actually, you could feel the hurt from both generations, the older generation and the younger generation, because this is something that's been going on for so long now, and it hasn't changed. And so when you do it peacefully, nothing changes. And obviously now, you know, it, it's resulted to violence, which nobody wants. And that's also not going to solve anything. Where do we go from here? And that is the question. <laughs> that's the, that's the question of our times. It really, really is. When you see the protests here in, in the United Kingdom, in, in London and, and Manchester, uh, I think there was some in Cardiff as well. Clearly, this, this, the, the, the sense of feeling here has spread internationally, understandably. How does that make you feel? I mean, I, I, I understand it. You know, we have our, our, our cases here in the UK. Um, you know, we've, we've got some, some names here as well uh, of, of young black um, males who have been um, you know, murdered under police custody. And so that, that is the reason why it's also happening here. You know, the feeling uh, of what's happening in America has been reflected um, by the feelings of how black people do feel here in the UK. And so it's understandable. I, I definitely understand it. I mean, you, you know, there was a lot of, lot of, lot of people protesting. I didn't know the numbers were, were going to get to, to that amount, but it was, you know, extraordinary scenes here in London as well and, and across the world. And I feel as though everybody should be in solidarity um, across the globe because it is a, a global issue. Yeah, sure. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about this after two this morning. John Mysek uh, is our man in the United States of America. Every Monday we speak to him. Uh, quite the Monday to, to be uh, to be doing so, actually. Um, I can't quite remember a weekend as uh, intense, maybe is the word to describe it, um, as the one that we've uh, we've been through. So we'll, we'll speak to John. His take on that coming up after two this morning. As well as that, Kwame, it's also Magic Monday today. Apparently, I'm not quite sure how magic you're feeling, uh, but some school, <laughs> some schools are going back today. Some schools, I think it's worth saying, uh, very much the asterisks there. Uh, groups of six can meet from today, although I think that social media um, and Instagram and Facebook has, uh, has certainly demonstrated that that's already happening. Um, a flurry of announcements, some of the businesses, sports returning, unexpected announcement about some of the most vulnerable being able to see uh, one person. Just um, as a feel, Kwame, how, 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 how are you feeling? Are you feeling magic about it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, am I feeling magic? That's a good question. I mean, it, it feels like it's just come out of the blue. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It feels like it's like everything's being, it feels rushed. It's like, let's get back to school. Let's get, you know, some businesses started. Let's start some sports activities. And now six people can meet up. I mean, it's, it was only last week we were told you know, you can't go out and, you know, you, you shouldn't, you know, visit relatives and you shouldn't congregate in groups. And all of a sudden, we're like, get out, get back to school. I mean, my kids have, you know, I have been told uh, they'll be going back to school. I've got my daughter who's in year um, six and, and, and my son who's in year one. So they've, they've both been asked to come, come back to school. Now, how do I feel about that? If the government are saying it's okay, then I think it's it's the right thing to to do. I mean, they've been home for ten weeks now. It's a long time, um, and as much as I love them, it is time for them to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting. Okay, because forty six percent of parents, uh, Kwame, have said that they they are not going to send their kids back. Um, it looks as though just uh, well, uh, just over half really um, of those people who are being asked to go back are actually going to go back. 
but you're not in that 46 percent no we're not in that 46 percent and it's it's going to be it's going to be very strange i think for for kids and also you know my son and daughter because what is what is school life now going to to be like with with the social distancing um with limited numbers in the classroom what is the teaching experience going to be like i mean it's a bit different for my daughter who's older she'll understand it she'll know that you know she has to stay two meters apart from her friends but you know my 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 son who's younger that's what being a kid's about isn't it you know hanging out with your your friends and you know getting a little bit mucky so that's that's going to be interesting and to see what kind of effect that's going to have on them and to say they're only going back two days a week because they go monday and tuesday um, and they have wednesday off to disinfect the school and then the second group go thursday friday so it's going to be a totally different school experience and and so what what do you know then of the measures that they're going to put in place clearly it sounds like they've kind of they've got a good grip on this but but what what measures are they going to put in place for your children when they're there well for our for, for my kids school they we're going to be dropping them at specific times at the school gate uh in the morning so they've got set times that they have to um arrive at school um there's going to be separated desks so the kids are going to be sitting on separate desks. Um, it's going to be smaller classes as well. Um, they're going to be advised to hand sanitize throughout the whole day. Um, and then again, when we pick them up from school, we have um, certain times, um, scheduled times that we pick them up as well. Okay. So it, it sounds like things are pretty... Um pretty well planned out for for where y you are I mean, do you feel would, would there be a case of if they if they came home to you on on the monday or the tuesday kwame and said look and per, per, perhaps your older um child is is better placed to do this i imagine and said well i've been all over the kids you know we've been crawling all over each other there's just no way that we can do this we're, we're touching the same things the hand sanitizers aren't there you know if they if they kind of demonstrated to you that it's not that it's not working or would you ask them that question on monday tuesday that's probably a better way of putting it would you ask okay. them for their feedback I definitely will be asking their feedback to to understand, you know, how it how it's working. Do they feel comfortable with it themselves? Um, are they okay with with the um, new setup? So definitely, we will be paying close attention to to us, obviously their well being because that's definitely uh, of paramount importance to us. But we also do feel as though, I and mean, when I say we, my wife and I, I, we do feel as though it is now time for them to to get back to socializing in a school environment I, I believe that's very important how's that 10 weeks been for them then <laughs> it's, it's been testing um <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, the best way to put it but in, in overall it they've been very good we've we've been um very strict with them um they've done their homeschooling so we've given them the timetable um, they have to be up at the same time and they do their classes and they have their breaks and they have their lunch time um, and then they finish school um, and then they do fitness activities as well. Um, and then when they've had their half terms, we've given them their half terms as well. Um, they've dealt with it quite well. I, I think my older girl understands it obviously much better. Um, my younger one, it's a bit restless sometimes, but I understand that, you know, they're, they're pretty much being cooped up at home. We're quite fortunate we've got a garden so he's been like you know he can go out and play as much as he wants but that interaction i've seen how that definitely changed him that lack of interaction should i say with you know his buddies and his friends it's definitely you know i think he's missing them and, and, and he's ready to, to go back but i don't think he understands how different it's going to be of course he you know mommy and daddy have told him but it's going to be interesting to see um how how he deals with it yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's kind of come with a flurry of, uh, of announcements as well, Kwame, today. We've been, we've been talking about people getting together in groups of six, uh, people being able to go and see somebody if they are one of the sort of vulnerable uh, shielding groups. Uh, how, how drastically are you going to change your life in the next couple of days then? Are you going to take up the offer and, and go and do a tour of the people that you've, you've missed and you've not seen in the last couple of weeks? Well, I, you know, for... For me, it's been really hard not being able to see um, my mother, and she, she's obviously felt really, she's really missed her, her grand, 
uh, children. That, that's that been a very, very, very difficult um, situation. Obviously, the blow has been softened with the advancements of such things like FaceTime. So we you know, pretty much FaceTime to every other day, and I've spoken to her every day. Uh, but it's not the same. And so I think that now that we are able to go in and visit her, she's going to be uh, over over the moon and ecstatic about it. So we definitely will be will be doing that. But I think that having barbecues and what have you not might be a little bit too early. Well, it's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because um, I, I must have, I was kind of taken aback slightly at the end of last week when just ahead of this really sunny weekend that we've had, we've we've decided to frame um, the the loosening of this lockdown as a chance to have barbecues. I mean, rather than saying this is an opportunity for you to get together with six other people, so it might be a nice chance for you to responsibly reintroduce yourself to that family that you've really badly missed over perhaps a takeaway cup of tea in their garden. It was it was barbecues, which, and I mean, look, I, I, I'm not a science expert, and so I've um, made, I've been very conscious not to try to pick holes in the science, but I communicate for a living, right? I, I kind of know how to communicate. I know how to get people's attention. I, I know roughly, I mean, you could argue whether or not I'm any good at it, uh, but I know how to get people to do things. And the word barbecue leads to thoughts of drinking, of parties, of mass gatherings, the connotations that barbecue has attached to it. I feel like a really odd way to pitch it, Kwame. Um, I, th- I definitely have to agree with you on that one, um, because, like I said, it wasn't, it was only, you know, last week, the week before that, where you know, we were, we were advised not to to um, congregate in groups, um, and I feel as though encouraging barbecues and uh, other such gatherings will definitely uh, encourage that. But I mean, look, we, you know, we could say that, but you know, we've all seen the images of you know Bournemouth Beach, South End Beach, you know mm. Cornwall. You know, I mean, have have we really been paying attention to to the um, the lockdown, I'm not sure. Mm. Some have, some haven't. I think it's the best idea to, to conclude that. I think for the most part, I think during the stay-at-home order, um, for, for the most part, it seemed, again, this is, this is anecdotal, but actually the evidence did suggest as well, from the amount of uh, trips that people were taking in cars and on public transport, etc., that for the most part, actually, the stay-at-home order, with the exception of um, maybe a handful of people, including the government, including Boris Johnson's senior advisor, People did actually stick to it, and people did ad- did adhere to it. And I just wonder if there's a real there's a real contrast, isn't there, Kwame, between the way that the stay at home order was issued and the way this next phase of the lockdown is being communicated. Very, very different. Massively different, and and, and that's what I was saying at the beginning. Beginning, it did feel like when we were going into lockdown, I felt like there was a it was a, it was a stage. You felt like things were shutting down slowly, and you could feel it was it was coming. For me, this announcement just feels like all of a sudden it's kickstart, let's get the engines going, let's get everybody back to school, back to work, and let's get moving. And so the other end, it, it does feel um, a bit rushed. Would, would, you, would, you, would you feel that as well, or is that just me? It, 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 it does, yeah, it does. I mean, like I say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pitched on the science. It concerns me greatly when there are scientists who are members of the SAGE committee who are willing to come out and say publicly uh, this weekend in, in, on various news outlets that they feel as though this is being taken too quickly. I also think we need to we need to bin this idea that we're being led by the science. I think that we can be honest with ourselves. I think we're grown-ups here, right? I think we know the difference between a political decision and a science decision. I think we also know that the scientists can advise the politicians, but ultimately they make political decisions. <laughs> you know, and that's, that, is, that is the reality of this whole situation. I'd give them much more credit if they were able to stand up and say, do you know what, yes, we have to take difficult decisions as politicians and, and, and yes, you're right to hold us to account for it, but we're going to try and be advised by the science as much as we possibly can as opposed to being uh, led by it. On that note as well, Kwame, I'm quite interested in, in, in your um, take on this specifically as somebody who also works in the events industry, because you've got an events business as well, haven't you, which is presumably one of the hardest hit and one of the last things to find its feet again at some point in the future. What, what, what's the situation looking like for you? Well, it was the, the first one out and it definitely will be the last one in. Um, we were hit ex- extremely hard. Um, it, it felt like, um, you know, the bench just fell off the edge of a cliff. 
Um, as you know, all types of events have, have been cancelled, such as conferences, meetings, exhibitions, corporate hospitality, outdoor events, festivals, um, music events and sporting events. And so that affected us greatly. Um, the only thing, the only saving grace I can say is that we were very fortunate. We, we reached out to all of our clients and, and we spoke to them and all wanted to postpone. So it wasn't any cancellations. Everyone was like, okay, we, you know, we understand the situation. We know what's happening, mm. but we'll just postpone it till later on in the year or next year. And so we've just, you know, we've got open dialogue with all of our clients and we've just said, you know, we just have to you know, pay attention um, as to when the government decides to lift the ban on, on um, gatherings. Uh, and when we can um, start doing events again. And and, and the issue of, with that, of course, is, and this is the issue that, that every industry and, and, and every individual really is facing. I mean, we're, we're hearing here that 46% of parents aren't going to be sending their children back to school today um, when they're eligible to go back to school. Uh, you have to wonder how many people are going to want to go to cafes, how many people are going to want to go to restaurants, whether the demand will be there in the way that it needs to be there for these businesses to continue to survive, never mind thrive. I just wonder if you've got a sense, Kwame, from your perspective as somebody who puts events on, whether there is going to be a demand anytime soon for mass gatherings, even if they are allowed. I think that it's definitely going to... You're going to have to camp there, you know, as with, for example, now there are people who want to get together um, and hang out in groups and, and celebrate with, with one another. Um, and then there are others who, who are just not ready to do that. And I think it's going to be the same um, with, with the events industry as well. Um, I think that in the private sectors, things, things in social events such as um, weddings, milestone birthdays, I feel as though those will be quite quick to 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 be recovered, you know, um, someone's holding a wedding, I know brides and grooms are really keen to, 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 to you know, get their vows going and, 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 and do this, but I think it's going to be things like um, corporate events, exhibitions, trade fairs, which might take longer where, you know, you see thousands of, of delegates um, flying in from all around the world and attending, that could take a little bit of time um, just because of, you know, those being mass gatherings. So, yeah, it could take some time. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, one place that it seems to be uh, pretty safe, safe at least to hug people, um, we, we see in the news, Kwame, in the last um, 24 hours or so, is... In space, the SpaceX NASA flight uh, took off from Cape Canaveral on Saturday. Did, did you see any of that? Did you watch it? Oh, I, I loved it. I, I, I'm really an advocate for, for space travel, and it was it was so good to see, um, you know, a, a launch for, from America. It's been nine years since the last one um, lifted off, and it, it, it was just amazing. I I, cause I remember. Um, being younger and, and watching um, you know, um, space rockets going off, and, and they just felt so big and clunky back then. You know, there's so many dials and, and knobs to twist and push, and, and now this new SpaceX um, rocket just looked like the inside of a, of a Tesla. It was it was just amazing. Did you see it? It was all flat screen. Yeah, and yeah. It just was so clean. It was it was unbelievable. It was amazing. It was it was so good good to see and. Yeah, it would, it would have been good to have flown off to, to space with all that's going on here at the moment. <laughs> it would. It looked like, uh, it looked every bit Elon Musk's invention, didn't it, to be fair? It looked oh. really, it looked, it kind of looked really, I mean, I wonder, I wonder just how much, how much attention they, they paid to making it look like some sort of futuristic, um, space craft. Because it did, didn't it? I mean, it really, really, I guess it's also got to be safe, but it, all, but it did look very, very much like it had been ripped from a movie. It, 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 I mean, even the um, space suits that the astronauts were wearing, I was like, this is not what I was expecting. Because, you know, remember, they, they used to come out looking like the Michelin Man, quite clunky with the big um, gas cylinder on their back. I mean, these guys looked like they were straight out of Star Trek. It was, it was just amazing. Um, and the whole thing just, just went off without a hitch as well. It was, it was so cool to... To see, obviously, there was a 50 50 chance of if it was going to, to go off or not. And it just went off without a hitch and it just looked amazing. And um, I can't wait to see more.
Yeah, bring it on, absolutely. And in, in amongst all this, it felt all the more special, didn't it? Really, that we were we were uh, amidst a global pandemic, managing to sort of come together. It's very much an international effort. Uh, although Trump were quite quick to kind of claim claim it as an American victory, it is very much an international effort uh, to to get two men into space and to continue human discovery. It felt quite, it quite it felt quite special in the in in the context of our current situation, didn't it? It felt really special, and and to you know. We have to remember they're going to the International Space Station where there are astronauts from all over the world who are working in um, synergy and unity above the planet, regardless of what's going on down here. And so it shows that we can work together. And I think that's definitely uh, very symbolic in, in a time like this when there is so much unrest and, and um, uncertainty um, around the globe at the moment. Yeah, quite, absolutely. Um, hey, Kwame, I think it went quite well, our first outing together. It was awesome. Okay, you don't sound overly yeah. enthusiastic, but no, never mind. No, no, okay. no, no. no, it's all right. <laughs> Message received, Kwame. Message received. <laughs> no, no, it was great to be, be here. Dara, I really appreciate it, and... Um, we should do it again very, I, very soon. I think so. I think whether you agree, I don't know, but we'll, I, I think so. Uh, quite a bit really nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. You Take care too. of yourself and good luck with the business. I hope it goes all, it, it all sort of comes together for you. We're willing you on. Thanks very much. Really appreciate that, Daryl. Take care, mate. Kwame Knight with us Take this care. morning. Take care. Uh, presenter and broadcaster and events host as well. Uh, with us on Talk Radio this morning, his take on what's going on.